today we are visiting Crown Point and the Cocoa Reef Resort and Spa. Cocoa Reef sits on 10 acres of manicured land and is only a short walk away from the ANR Robinson International Airport, the historic Fort Milford and the famous Pigeon Point Beach. We have a packed show for you this week, so let's take a look at what's to come. I'm Davia Chambers and this is Let's Talk Tobago. A memorandum of understanding is signed for workers at the Studley Park Quarry. We take you to Golden Lane where residents met with the police service and later Tobago commemorates Pharmacy Week. These stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago continues. Do stay with us. They say it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters the most. And in the face of disaster, chaos and panic, it is the Tobago Emergency Management Agency's comprehensive emergency response plans that will matter most to Tobago. This agency's modernized approach to emergency management is driven by technology, powered by networking, focused on community resilience, open to partnering, enhanced through training, and led by a highly competent and dedicated staff. This has positioned them as one of the premier disaster management agencies in the region and earned them Trinidad and Tobago Diamond Standard Certification. Congrats, TEMA, Tobago Emergency Management Agency. Preparations for this three-star hotel began in 1993. Construction started a year later by hotelier John Jeffries, who wanted to build Tobago's premier resort for local, regional and international guests to explore the culture and beauty of Tobago. We move now from Crown Point to Studley Park as the new special purpose company Studley Park Enterprise Limited is seeking to make the quarry a profitable entity. The first step is for the Tobago House of Assembly to ensure adequate provisions are made for workers. Omidara Mills has this report. Workers at the Studley Park quarry have been assured they won't lose their jobs. The quarry will now be managed by a special purpose company called Studley Park Enterprise Limited. Some workers will be hired under the new company. This guarantee is one of the major conditions coming out of the Memorandum of Understanding signed by the National Union of Government and Federated Workers, NUGFW, on behalf of the workers and the THA. We would have agreed that a number of positions um, would be made available to the union so that their workers can take up those positions in the new company. We agreed on a number and um, we will ensure that that arrangement um, is executed. Um, workers will go, those who choose to go to the new company <laughs> shall go, do so under terms and conditions that are no less favorable than what they now enjoy. The special purpose company will be managed by a board of directors. And for those workers who aren't able to fill certain positions within the new company, they will be reassigned to one of the THA's divisions. We wanted to ensure that nobody was retrenched or terminated and so forth. Those who are unable to meet the the, uh, the requirements of what they need at the level of the board would be redeployed in the in the DIQUE, the Division of Infrastructure, Quarries and Environment. And those who have remained, they would be better salaried. And now they will not be considered as deliberated workers. They will be paid on a monthly basis. The union was also able to negotiate an additional incentive for employees who will be transferred to the division. We believe that it is a good agreement on behalf of the workers and the people of Tobago. Because when you are negotiating, you only think about the workers. You have to think in terms of your employers. Because without the employers, there will be no work. And without the employees, there will be no work. So we arm it can be resolved. The quarry is considered to have some of the best aggregate in the region. The rock material comes from andesite, a hard, dense volcanic rock. It's a valuable resource for the construction industry. With proper management, the Stully Park Quarry can become a significant source of revenue for the island. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. The name Cocoa Reef is inspired by the tall coconut palms that line the property and the rock reef built to protect the hotel's large beach from erosion. 
Now, young people from Signal Hill now have a space to call their own as the island opened its fifth youth center recently. Youth organizations are being encouraged to use the facility for personal development. Here's this story. Young people in Signal Hill now have a space of their own. The Signal Hill Youth Center officially opened its doors earlier this month. And organizations like the Signal Hill Police Youth Club and Junior Chamber International are being encouraged to use the facility for development in Tobago. The center is a space for at-risk youth to participate in positive programs and activities. This opening can bring out a lot of youths in the community, especially those who are not on the right path right now. And it may help them to see what they have so they can benefit because there are a lot of us out here who don't have these kind of things and willing to have it so that we may benefit and become better and be better in life. The center is equipped with a computer lab and gaming area. Now, youth in Signal Hill are being told they have the chance to make the space their own. I want to make sure that GCI could um, make this their home as well. The faith-based organizations, youth um, involved in faith-based organizations could also feel a part of this space. Uh, the space is just a shell. What we're trying differently with this is to allow the young people to define what that space is. All right, so you ain't going to see no fancy thing in there. I think it has to come from the young people. We at the department will facilitate the process. Collaboration is being seen as the key to making the best use of facilities like the Signal Hill Youth Center. And it's programs, facilities like these that provide us the, the opportunity to give the youth something to look forward to. Um, we will be working collaboratively with the Division of Community Development um, because they have a similar program of facilities called Y Zones. So together with them and us with our youth centers, we hope that we provide these facilities for the youth to be um, to take advantage of. This is the fifth youth center in Tobago. The others are located at Bethel, Union, Castara, and Pembroke. I'm Kuhn De Freitas for Let's Talk to Bagel. From shopping to tennis courts, jacuzzis, a fitness center, and organized tours of Tobago, there's always something to do at Cocoa Reef to keep active or just sit back and relax. Now this, residents of the Providence Mason Hall Moriah District met with officials from the Tobago House of Assembly to discuss issues affecting the island and to allow residents to contribute to its development. Our cameras were at the Mason Hall Community Center to bring you this report. Have a look. Residents of Mason Hall and Environs were the first to meet with the Tobago House of Assembly for 2017. They attended the first one-on-one -on -one community meeting to get updates on key issues, such as the fiscal 2018 budget. They also shared ideas with the THE and suggestions on improvements they'd like to see in Tobago. These included encouraging local entrepreneurs at the Scarborough Esplanade to transform the area into a hub of activity for the upcoming cruise ship season. Agriculture was another major concern for residents in the area. People who were working in the URP and the, and the CPEP, we could step them up, put them on this land, let them plant some food, right? You could open a canteen somewhere, had some of the ladies and them who were selling peas, who were preparing food. So the same people and them who were working will go there and take lunch, buy food, and the money coming back to pay them. And this is how Chief Secretary Calvin Charles responded. I accept the recommendation in the spirit in which it was given because what I interpret you to really be saying is that we, in, a, in seeking um, creative ways to engage these people, um, that we look to areas that may be wanting at this time and put some of the workers to, um, there. Another resident raised the long-standing issue of office renters for THA divisions. And I am looking first at the rental of many buildings in Scarborough. Somewhere along the line, we have to stop that. I have instructed my colleagues that there will be no new rentals of any buildings. As a matter of fact, we don't have money to pay. 
and we shall use the current buildings that we have available. And in fact, I chair a, an ad hoc committee at this time trying to ensure that the Milchil building is outfitted so that we can utilize it. The THA continues to focus on developing the island by enhancing its communities. And in that spirit, one resident called for community tourism in Mason Hall through a heritage park and other activities. We spoke about donkey carting people from by Alan Mark up there, the man had a team there, into that space there, that piece of land that um, the THA had for the longest while, we wanted to put a, a, a cemetery and so on. We want to use that space, cut that space, have donkey cat tours. The chief secretary also took the opportunity to allay fears of job losses within the THE. At this time, the counter argument is that if the THE does not employ them, who will? As I already mentioned, at this point, we do not have a robust manufacturing sector, but we're hoping to change that. And in very practical terms, as we maintain employment levels, what happens is that we, employ, we maintain aggregate disposable income. This was the first community meeting of the one-on-one -on -one series held by the Assembly. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. We have to take a break, but when we return, we take you to Golden Lane for the latest police service town meeting. Don't go anywhere. Let's talk to Bego. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We are exploring Coco Reef Resort and Spa. Now on the property is Sunset Villa, a one-bedroom villa that has private decks over the water, beach access, two bathrooms, and even a minibar. Golden Lane is the latest stop for the Trinidad and the Tobago Police Service town meeting series. It gave the officers the opportunity to interact with residents and find out about any challenges they've experienced with policing and crime. Kern Freitas tells us more. The village of Golden Lane was the latest stop for the Trinidad and Tobago Police Services town meeting series. The meetings in communities across the country are encouraging interaction between police and residents. It's also creating a line of communication the officers hope will improve collaboration in solving crimes and build greater trust between both sides. The top cop of the Tobago Division, Acting Assistant Commissioner of Police, Garfield Moore, acknowledged that the police also have their roles to play. We as police officers need to show our communities respect. I want to look at two actions that we must pursue. Police action and community action in a collaborative effort to ensure that we have that safety which we look for. And what are some of the things that the police can do to ensure that we can gain the trust and confidence in our community and also to build about that safety that we require. The major concern raised on the night is dangerous driving in Golden Lane. But I know what you're talking about is this uh, about the car spinning the road and the car taking a lot of car about that. And that, is, that is dangerous driving. And they can be persecuted because they are putting a lot of posts at risk. So, so we can persecute those persons once we have the evidence. 
The issue of establishing a better relationship between the public and the police was also raised by a former chief secretary. We will not trust the police. We are going to not trust the police. And we can't say, we're not telling the police how we don't have any trust in them. We're going to crack the continue. We want to really thank you for the various uh, contributions you have made. We know that from what you all have said, we have. This is the 10th police town meeting held in Tobago for the year. I'm Kundi Freitas for Let's Talk Tobago. Meal packages and golf and tennis packages are all available when you vacation at Cocoa Reef Resorts and the Spa. Management also wants you to know that they facilitate any social events. Now in the 21st century, education is something many people take for granted. But for those who are struggling with literacy, one non-profit organization is providing life-changing support. Here are the details from Omodara Mills. A lot of emphasis is placed on having a good formal education. It's one of the reasons many adults and young adults feel embarrassed admitting they need help learning to read. But for those who are determined to improve their life, there's support at the Tobago Institute of Literacy. The institute was started over 20 years ago. Since then, it's helped thousands of people become more confident and improve their lives. The curriculum deals with communication skills, numeracy, and of course, literacy, which takes in comprehension, spelling, reading, fluency, all the things that are necessary for somebody to survive because we are not getting you ready to do CXC. We are giving you functional literacy, something that you can use. You can go into the grocery, you're a fisherman, you should be able to do weights and measures, you should be able to understand money. For this academic year, over 300 people are attending classes at community centers, secondary schools, the Scarborough Library facility, the prison, and rehabilitation centers. The current curriculum was designed by the University of the West Indies. Many have graduated from the program, and some of these graduates have gone on to earn other academic certificates. Our new curriculum takes in pre-basic, basic, intermediate slash advanced. And that level, the intermediate advanced, I looked at it closely, and I said, you know, with a little tweaking, we might be able to do the school leaving. And it worked very successful distinctions and credits this year. All hats goes off to that tutor with her three students, her two ladies and one gentleman, and they all passed. And they are on top of the world and they're getting ready now to go and enroll in a CXC class. The Institute has 15 tutors who assist students from teens to seniors in their 70s. It's my desire to have everybody read being able to use a computer, being able to manage their smartphones other than just receive a call. One of the biggest perks for parents or for moms or dads or whomever is to be able to do that and also to get promotion on the job. I feel a sense of satisfaction that you could pick up the newspaper and start pretending. There are four levels of the program. Potential students are assessed so that they are placed at the right level. Now, if you're interested in joining the program, you can call the Institute at 660-7747 or 660-7553. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Mr. Jeffries chose the hotel business because he loved the idea of contributing to the tourism sector. It's one of the reasons Cocoa Reef has been named Tobago's best resort on several occasions. The resort is a perennial recipient of the World Travel Award for the Caribbean's leading hotel. Now, one credit union in Tobago is a step closer to having its own building after hosting a sud turning ceremony recently in Scarborough. The details are in this report. The Tobago branch of the Trinidad and Tobago Fire Service Credit Union will soon have a new home. The credit union has been housed at Copa's Building Uptown Scarborough for the past five years. Now the sod has been turned for the new building. The process that has gotten us here has been a long one. And in the minds of some people it may have been too long. 
and more so probably the people of Tobago. The 700 members of the Tobago branch have had a long wait for their new building due to technical challenges. Construction will begin by January 2018. If you look at the building, you see it's a three-story building with a sub-basement, which is for car park. Car park and may be limited, but I'm told that we can also access where we are today. The first floor is going to be for, and I'm going to use a unholy word in the credit union movement, um, our banking services. The second floor is going to be for commercial use, um, income generation via rent. And we are the, the top floor, which is the rooftop, can also, will also be accessible for hosting functions. Chief Secretary Calvin Charles encouraged the board of the credit union to be more creative in supporting economic growth on the island. It is not normal for, say, a credit union to get into some form of agro-processing. I know of no one, no credit union. In light of our focus, our meaning the THA's focus at this time on increasing food production, as well as agro-processing, can the credit union either as an institution in its own right or through its membership, its Tobago membership, think about getting involved in agro-processing. Because the truth be told, we do not in Tobago have a very vibrant manufacturing sector at this time. The new building for the Tobago branch of the Trinidad and Tobago Fire Service Credit Union should be completed by October 2018. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. Coming up next, Tobago celebrates Pharmacy Week. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you for staying with us. This is Let's Talk Tobago. Now, Coco Reef has something for everyone. If you're into motorsports, you can hit the beach, and there's a lagoon specially built for kids to swim in. You can also relax by the pool or visit the Tranquil Spa. This next report is all about wellness. Pharmacists in Tobago are encouraging people to pay careful attention to their health. Omodara Mills tells us how we can reduce the risk of lifestyle diseases. Getting tested for high blood pressure, glucose, cholesterol, and even an eye exam can save your life. That's why Tobagonians attended a free health fair during Pharmacy Week. It's important in preventing lifestyle diseases such as heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and strokes, the four leading causes of death in Trinidad and Tobago. Pharmacists say that these illnesses are also the reason for most of the prescriptions they fill. So they used the occasion to educate the public about how they can prevent and manage non-communicable diseases. For a lot of patients with high blood pressure, they, they have all this pressure medication. Sometimes they take them, sometimes they don't take all, sometimes they take none. And the, the, the thing is, if you don't take control of that high blood pressure, Sadly, but truly, you can end up dead or you can end up disabled. You can end up paralyzed from the waist down. So to prevent these patients from starting to live lives that aren't fulfilling, we have to encourage them to take the medication. We have to raise awareness of these harmful side effects of the diseases. This year's theme is Let's Get Better Together to Manage Non-Communicable Diseases. Pharmacists are encouraging patients to ask questions about the medication they are prescribed. They also want people to take their health into their own hands. You must have a healthy, balanced diet that promotes, that promotes a healthy heart, it promotes healthy living. The second thing patients can do is exercise. Whether you're sick, if you're not sick, exercise is important. Inactivity is a killer. Some people, they do a lot of sitting, they do a lot of sleeping. My job is a lot of sitting. I have to exercise. Everybody, you, you don't have to be sick at least 15 minutes a day, at least five days a week. Take a quick walk, a brisk walk. You want to feel your heart rate increase. 27-year-old audiovisual technician Rolf Celestin took advantage of the free screenings at the health fair. He explains why he decided to stop by. I think it's always important to know 
be in the know, understand where your health is, health is at, and uh, you, I mean, you can't fail. And, and it's free again. <laughs> it's free right here on the mall right now. It's free. Nothing better than to know. Pharmacy Week is an annual event that highlights the roles and responsibilities of our pharmacists in the healthcare system. The week included lectures on the prevention and management of lifestyle diseases at the Scarborough General Hospital and at the island's health centers. It's hoped that these events will motivate people to become more proactive about their own well-being. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. It's not just the amenities or the stunning view of the Caribbean Sea that keep guests coming back. It's also the customer service, location and extras like babysitting and bonus bookings. It's all geared towards making sure you maximize your vacation. So Tobago was represented at the 2017 Caribbean Youth Leaders Summit in Jamaica. In this next story, one youth advocate who attended the summit is hoping to see more young Tobagonians play a greater role in fostering positive social change. Here's more. Youth councils from across the Caribbean met to discuss issues affecting the region. The talks also covered the roles of participating countries in achieving the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. Latoya Roberts, the president of the Tobago Youth Council, was one of three Tobagonians at the meeting. It was important for us to have a presence day to discuss youth development issues, to discuss best practices from all the different Caribbean islands coming together, and to work on a way forward in terms of policy development of youth in the Caribbean. The summit also allowed participants to identify ways to support youth development and to discuss how they can help implement the 2030 Agenda. Ideas included partnerships with governments and the private sector. Currently, we have two councils in the country. One council representing Trinidad, which is the Trinidad Youth Council, and one representing Tobago. What we realize is that the National Youth Council did exist previously, but it became dormant. And from discussions with all the regional partners and with even our counterparts in Trinidad, we see the need to one reestablish that National Youth Council. The council hopes that youth across Tobago will become active partners in transforming society. We also see the need to just continue partnering and building because a lot of youth organizations are operating in little pockets, but there's always strength in numbers, so it's about getting that strong, cohesive voice. The Division of Sport and Youth Affairs, which helped re-establish the Tobago Youth Council in 2016, financed the trip of Tobago's representatives. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's now time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear what you, the viewers, have to say. Today we are asking, how can producing more food in Tobago benefit the island? While you think about it, we'll have a look at who had their say this week. Producing more food in Tobago will save us running to Trinidad for everything and we'll have time to do things here because when you look at the amount of money you have to spend to take the ferry to go to Trinidad to get food to come back, that money could go to use to do something else here in Tobago. We can afford to feed ourselves and our family, our neighbors, our friends and avoid having the stress with food spoiling on the boat coming from Trinidad and having headaches with vessel breaking down. One, we would uh, employ people in the agriculture sector. Two, we will uh, save on the needed foreign exchange instead of importing food from outside of Trinidad and Tobago. And you eat what you grow. It will save us a lot of money, which that money can be used to do something else and we will be eating a lot healthier. Once you could feed yourself, you're good to go. You have no problem. And if Tobago could do that, that is a great, great plus. We close yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago and as always we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week. We close now with a montage of the Ratha Yathra Festival. We do hope you enjoy.